Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to discuss and also demonstrate a one tube drop in reverb circuit that you could build and add to any tube amp style build for guitars or really anything else. Uh, it's a pretty cool little circuit. I want to walk through what it's, the schematic looks like, what it does, and also show you how I've implemented it into a new tube amp build that I'm working on. So, if that sounds interesting to you, let's dive in. Okay, this is the schematic and layout that I found, and I will leave links to these in the description if you want to take a look at it. There's some really nice discussion here as well on how you can modify and tweak it, but um, this is a really uh, nice and simple one-tube reverb. Now, most of the Fender, like Blackface-style tube reverbs, actually use two tubes, two 12AX7s or 12AU7s, and so it gets a little bit difficult to budget that much tube and transformer and all that space for your build. So this one tube reverb is attractive because it still provides a lot of that spring reverb tone with just a simpler package. So let's take a look at the schematic here. It's fairly simple and straightforward. The uh, idea here is you've got this input. This is wherever you're dropping the signal in, this is where this, the signal is coming from. And I'll, there's some other schematics here where I can show you in context, but that's your input. It's gonna send out to RV there's a 100K mixing resistor, and it's gonna prevent the signal from just passing through without going into the reverb circuit. And then you've got RV2, which is the output of the reverb where it mixes back in. Now this 100K resistor deserves a little bit more discussion. Like I said, you have this signal coming in. You need a little bit of resistance here to encourage the signal to go up to RV, which is here, so it will actually go into the reverb circuit. If you don't have any resistance, like I said, it wouldn't have be incentivized to go into the reverb. But also, once that wet signal goes through the reverb circuit, it's going to exit out of RV2, and it could go backwards through your circuit. So it also kind of is a mixing resistor to make sure that the wet signal also continues on to the output. So the 100K resistor is important for a couple of reasons, and you could also play around with the value a little bit. I think a, a higher value would probably... Um, suppress the dry signal and, and and boost the amount that goes into the reverb. So um, something to maybe experiment with uh, to, for helping you figure out how you're going to mix the dry and wet signals together. Then the signal goes to RV, which is right here. This one meg is actually a pot. You could use fixed resistors and just like um, just use a one meg to ground that would be no resistance. Um, you could also use some kind of fixed voltage divider. Um, I think I had experimented with like a 220K on the input and then one meg to ground with it coming out of the middle of the connection of those two. So that's like if you had like a like a 1.2 meg pot, it was, it'd be on like 8 out of 10 or so. Um, but you can also use a potentiometer here and use this as a dwell function and that basically sends the amount of input signal into the reverb so that has a lot to do with how long the sustain is how basically how much signal is fed into the reverb tank then you've got a basic 1.2k bias resistor on the cathode with a 10 microfarad cathode bypass cap it goes from the plate into a reverb transformer you can use any fender blackface style reverb transformer in this situation uh, and it would work really well. And the other end of that winding of that transformer goes to your B plus supply here at the C node. And you do need a high, like a 250 volt DC B plus supply coming from your power supply. The other end of that reverb transformer has one end to go into the ground. And the other end it sends out to your reverb tank. Uh, I'm going to be using a three spring Mojo Tone reverb tank, but I've also got a two spring, which I may test out as well. Um, but that's where you would send out to your reverb tank. And again, just a standard, typical Fender reverb tank would work great. Then we come to this 220K resistor, which allows a little bit of that signal to kind of stabilize and gives you some grid, um, grid leak here from the next 12X7. There's also this 500 picofarad capacitor. In my build, I ended up actually removing that because I felt as if it was actually causing the reverb to be a little bit darker than what I wanted. Um, I wanted kind of that springy, high-end, zingy, uh, almost surfy type feel, whereas with the 500 picofarad cap, it was a little bit more of like a roomy 
type reverb and it didn't have that same kind of sibilance or, or sizzle from the spring. So I just cut it out entirely. You could also experiment with a smaller value like 250 or 100 picofarads uh, to dial in basically the tone of the reverb with this capacitor. Again, on the cathode, 1.5K bias, 22 microfarads bypass cap, 100K to the plate, where you go to point D, which would be another B plus supply. You got a 0.01 decoupling cap, and then this is your one meg control here for your reverb level. Um, I also bumped this up to, uh, I believe, three mega ohms, because that I wanted more, I w it was a little bit too subtle for my taste at that setting. I wanted it to, at like at, at seven or eight or nine on the reverb control, I wanted it to be a little bit more, ex you know, lush. Um, now with it being a one tube reverb, the circuit is going to be a little bit more mild in comparison to most of the blackface style. So I think that three meg pot was beneficial there. And then I also think I dropped down this 330K a little bit to more like a 200K. So just a couple different modifications you could make, mostly the value of this 100K resistor, the value of this 330K resistor, and this one meg pot. These three components together, and also this one meg, those four components, I should say, really help to dial in the mix and the level of the reverb. So if you're struggling to get reverb that is like sitting with the, the correct amount of mix with the dry, then those are the resistors and and pots to play around with. Then other than this 500 picofarad cap, um, that was all I had to use to dial in how much brightness you have. Um, and overall, just a really simple and compact and functional little circuit. Let's look at another one of these schematics and just analyze how it was implemented. Here we've got um, signal comes in to this, I think this might be a pentode here actually, and into a cathode follower, into a tone stack, and then right here at just the exit of the tone stack, you've got the insert of the reverb. Then there's an effects loop and then a phase inverter. And so with this circuit, um, you uh, you have the reverb kind of here at the tail end. One maybe thought I have, I would probably personally prefer to have the effects loop go be just before it, but this is totally fine as well. So. This just means the reverb is going to be applied to whatever effects you have in the effects loop. But again, um, sends out. Now this person also put a 0.001 cap here on the input. That's again just going to trim maybe a little bit of bass frequencies. They use a 1 meg dwell pot. Everybody else is here. They do have the, the cap. 1 meg pot here and a 100k. So just a little bit of difference here is on these resistors are going to help kind of get the dwell amount to be correct for this amp. And some of this depends a little bit on how it's interacting with the signal coming before it because you've got this cathode follower driving through the tone stack right into the reverb. These values fit well with this amp, but depending on where you place this in your circuit, it might need a little bit of tweaking. But um, that is the schematic breakdown. Um, I think it's a really neat little circuit, and let's go ahead now and listen to it, how it's playing out in my amp. Okay, I've got my amplifier out here uh, sometime, hopefully soon. I will be able to go into more detail about this. I'm really excited about this amp project, but basically what you need to know right now is it has the one tube reverb circuit that I just went through installed in it. Uh, we're gonna start with some clean tones and uh, that'll give us a little bit of a feel with how it responds in a clean tone setting. We're gonna start with the reverb off. Let's bump the reverb to about. So that's just providing a nice, kind of soft, roomy sound, just to give you a little bit of wetness. Halfway now. It 
So you can definitely hear the springiness. A big part of that is because I removed that cap that was kind of darkening things. With this, you can definitely hear that flutter on the top end. That springy, kind of catchy character, which I really like. I would still say you can play underneath that, and the decay and, and draw out time is actually pretty healthy, um, but it's not so overpowering that it's extremely effecty. You know, I, we're not in like surf territory yet. Go up to three quarters now. Now with my current implementation, I noticed that there's a little bit of a dulling of the dry signal. So I think some of that relates back to that mixing resistor. I might address that a little bit more because there is a little bit of dry signal loss going on here and specifically a kind of high end. Still a nice long decay, but it's, um, at this stage, if you were on a Fender amp, the reverb would be extremely overpowering. We're not quite at that level in my mind. It's, it's strong, but it's not the, it, as extremely heavy or mixed in as a Fender reverb would be. All the way up. Okay, so there you have it. That's the current implementation of this one tube spring reverb unit. Still have a couple things I want to like to work out in terms of the way it mixes, but I think it just has an initial baseline level. I was really happy with how it performs. For my money, I'm going to leave it probably more in this four or five clock range. I don't really do the surf thing, surf thing very much, but I do like to have a little bit of room, a little bit of springiness, just to give me some air and some feel underneath what I play. And I think for my money, this sounds fantastic. <laughs>